Hello, and uh, welcome to Paris Image Online for today's case study of Stillwater, presented by L'Industrie du Rêve. Uh, we're joined today by Raphael Benoliel, executive producer at First Step Productions, by Vanessa Cusé of Mission Cinema Marseille, by David Piacesek, uh, location manager for the film, and by Anne Fremio, uh, who was the casting director. The purpose of this round table uh, is to shine a light on Tom McCarthy's Stillwater, a Hollywood production that was shot and set uh, almost entirely in Marseille, which is an uncommon thing for a Hollywood production. Uh, the film played out of competition at the 2021 Cannes Film Festival and follows a roughneck American father played by Matt Damon who befriends and ultimately sort of falls in love with a single mother uh, and her daughter when visiting Marseille to try to get his own daughter out of a local prison. Uh, it's a very good film. I highly recommend you see it. Uh, but before we talk about the film and, and the way that it can shine a light on Marseille's production infrastructure, uh, why don't we rewind a little bit and look at Marseille and its relationship with the silver screen. And for that, I'd like to ask Vanessa Cusé from Mission Cinema Marseille to talk a little bit about um, Marseille's history with the seventh art. Yeah. Hello to everybody. Uh, you should know that cinema was born very close to Marseille in La Ciotat, and the city has always attracted the greatest filmmakers. Jean-Luc Godard, uh, William Friedkin, who get an Oscar in 72 for French Connection, Richard Curtis, and many more. But uh, Marseille remains a hub for cinema, um, thanks to an ecosystem um, um, of very skilled professionals and technicians, and due to a political will and ambition. Um, what are some of the more memorable films that have been uh shot in Marseille and that presented Marseille to international viewers over the years? Um, uh, international productions? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, in France, I guess the taxi series are the, are the, more, uh, are the most common, uh, popular Marseille films. But internationally, I mean, uh, the French Connection, I think, shot a few scenes in Marseille. The French Connection 2 by uh, John Frankenheimer. Uh, are there any other ones that come to mind for you? I've... If I can talk, uh, there's, there's one that actually, one of the first films that I've made with my uh, production service company, First Step, was uh, Love Actually, that because we, so no opportunity to say Happy New Year to everyone, it's, Love Actually is kind of the film that we're always watching uh, every Christmas, and uh, one of the story has been shot in Marseille, the one with Colin Firth. It's a good one. It's one of the better, it's one of the better stories in the film. Um, now, yeah. in, in, um, over the past decade or so, Marseille and its film commission has really taken a pretty active role in bringing people to the city, uh, launching what they called uh, the Educ Tour program. Could you tell us a little bit about that, Vanessa? Yes. Um, actually, uh, Tom McCarthy was invited 10 years ago to an Educ Tour, which is a trip towards filmmakers in order for them to discover the city the landscapes, but all the local resources they can rely on for their project. And during this Educ Tour, Tom McCarthy fell in love with the city and the idea of still water came to him. And he made regular trips and developed strong relationships with local crews. And um, thanks to this very um, fine understanding, he made a, a film uh, that portrayed Marseille so well. So just to recap there, like, there's a program that brings people to Marseille that hopes to you know, have them you know, fall in love with the city, that wants to inspire creative imaginations. And, and you know, that happens. It happened in the case with uh, Stillwater with Tom McCarthy. Um, but in, in a general sense, say a filmmaker decides that they want to set a portion of their film or their entire film in Marseille, but doesn't really have much know-how, um, on-the-ground know-how. They might go to someone like uh, Raphael Bonoliel, who offers production services for uh, First Step Production. Could you tell us a little bit about your services, about your company, and how you interact with filmmakers that are maybe interested but don't know what the next step might be? Uh, um, <clears throat> but you, usually... Um Yes, they, they're calling my company or, or many others now, and I think they will be more and more due to the increase of productions in France, and that's a good thing. Um, they contact me to to have a, a local support with whatever the region in, in France, uh, or even sometimes abroad as well. But um, and mainly uh, we are here to uh, 
um, guide them uh, in the case of uh, Tom to, of course, uh, shoot in Marseille. He, he wanted to be really uh, uh, true to the city and also trying to produce his film as uh, a French film would be produced. So depending on the production, sometimes we uh, we, we provide with a, a, a full and entire crew uh, from France, which technically was almost the case on Stillwater because they came with uh, very few HODs. Or sometimes they, they come in with uh, already a part of the crew because uh, not that they do not trust uh, any French technicians, but because they come in only for a few days and, and, and they have their core crew that follows them. Um, so we, of course, uh, basically uh, uh, go between and we employing all the technicians that they need. Uh, we help them with the tax rebates uh, uh, and, of course, uh, uh, to, to basically act as a uh, the production on the floor to deal with any suppliers, technicians, and whatsoever, depending on what they need. And it could be from uh, one day shooting for or more than uh, 100 days, depending if it's a film, a series, uh, and and the service, if we call that a service, I like to say that it's really sometimes a, a partnership. And I think it was the case with Tom, um, uh, it really varies from production to another. At the same time, international productions can rely on uh, Mission Cinema Marseille for logistical assistance. And what is the nature of that logistical assistance? Yeah, uh, maybe. No, 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 it's, uh, please. <laughs> okay, at our level, we provide free services to um, facilitate shoots in the city and uh, to ensure small training. So we provide um, assistance in scouting. We grant access to public sets like streets, schools, museums, uh, cemeteries, and so on. And um, we are the link between the productions and all the public services involved in the shooting. And um, for um, and finally, we deliver per film permits. And for Stillwater, it was a record number of. Um, of uh, traffic and parking uh, suspensions. <laughs> hey, every so, every production yeah. is different. Yeah, but, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, Ben. And, and one goes with the other. It's not like the Mission Cinema will replace a production service company or one or the other. It's just, we are really working together, and and um, um, it's just a different thing. Yeah. Um, so Stillwater. Uh, came out in 2021. And in 2018, there was another film called uh, Transit, a German film, um, and, and by Christian Petzold. And what they have in common is both of them were written uh, and conceived of to really take place uh, entirely in Marseille. Uh, to use um, kind of a bad cliche, uh, Marseille was a bit of a character in the film. Uh, when it comes to dealing with productions that really have a, a strong image and a strong desire to, um, you know, to put Marseille as a city and as a culture and uh, the various contradictions and the different elements of Marseille culture um, forward. When someone's like, when, a, when the director comes to you, uh, to, to David Piecek, uh, the locations manager, with, with an idea of, of really wanting to, um, to spotlight Marseille, does that make your job easier? Does that make your job more difficult? Does it, does it change anything about the way that you work with, uh, with visiting productions? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear the beginning of the. Of the, oh, well, just, the... Well, when 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 filmmakers come to Marseille with an idea, like as um, Tom McCarthy did with Stillwater, uh, and as maybe Christian Petzold uh, did as well with Transit, w with an idea to really like make the film as much about the city as it is about the characters, does that change the way that you work with them, scouting locations? Yeah, we we identify the city like like a character um, because the city is so diverse in every 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 area. <laughs> I don't know how to finish my my sentence, but it's so different that the city is so strong that it comes directly uh, a character of the of the movie. It. You can be indifferent when you come to Marseille. You love it or you hate it, but you have something to think about. It's not a, a simple city. It's even the, the people, for sure, but also <laughs> the diversity of the of the city, of the landscapes, of the of the different ages that you can find. At the moment, I'm doing a 1940 series, and we can f still find locations in the city that can work with the with the movie we can also recreate different 
countries, different cities in that city. So it's so rich in by the, the way she's uh, a mess <laughs> for uh, and a mix, a mix of different cultures, a mix of different ages, a mix of different uh, architecture. So all that mix shows Marseille and shows Marseille as a different city than we used to think when you think about France. Well, it's it's funny. Um, I believe that when Christian Petzold shot uh, Transit in Marseille, he also shot the portions of the film that were supposed to take place in Paris in Marseille. Is that correct? Exactly. We, we've got a few, few streets where, where we can do it. Uh, I did Bulgaria in Marseille. I did Algeria in Marseille. I did New York in Marseille. I did uh, many, many, many streets. And uh, with a bit of imagination, you can find many, many things in that country. In the, um, that city. And, and so when Tom McCarthy came and he wanted to shoot Marseille for Marseille, um, how did you guide him? Like, what was the nature of your interactions? Uh, sorry, I didn't hear. Well, well, when the production of Stillwater came and they wanted to shoot Marseille for Marseille, Marseille playing itself, um, what did they ask of you? What were they looking for in terms of locations? One of, one of the good things that we had with Tom is, as I was saying, is you, you, you wanted two things. And um, first, it was to shoot Marseille for Marseille and trying to be true to the city. And also, he wanted to make this film as a French director would have done a, a film as well in France or in, in Marseille. So it has different influence on the way we set up the crew and, and how we approach it. It's always a pleasure when you're working with a director who wants to be true to the city because um, as it could be the case for like, it's like if someone is coming to Paris and say, oh, I want to shoot Paris and he just wants to shoot the Eiffel Tower. Uh, it's nice because it part, it's part of it and you cannot deny it. So of course, when you're in Marseille, uh, you have the port, you have the Bonne Mer, but he wanted to be true and with the characters, he was saying, okay, if that character is from that social environment and that from that family, he would live in which area in Marseille, he wanted to be true to the to this part of Marseille. And then for each character, he wanted them to be in a situation where we would find the real uh, people from Marseille uh, if you were living there. And, and it was a very nice way to explore it. And of course, it emphasized and, and um, uh, all the technicians that worked on the film from Marseille also were very uh, proud and happy because it's not that they were giving a, a false image of the, what we can have from the city. Of course, you've mentioned other films and yes, uh, there's many stories that take place in Marseille or and then we're going to talk about drugs or whatever, but it's not the real Marseille. It's part of it as many other cities in the world. But uh, what was great with Stillwater is we wanted to portray um, a different aspect of the city and, and the life as it is. And that's why also they f fell in love with it, because there's, as David was mentioning, there's so many different things that could uh, uh, completely uh, seduce you in that city and that you can fall in love with it. And, uh, and not free being from Marseille, I can say that uh, with a complete um, neutral point of view. Um, and, and, um, and that was really nice. Uh, and of course, we were always trying to find new locations and trying to be true to the story and the characters. And of course, it, it runs uh, on the scouts and, and, and throughout the production. What are some of the uh, locations that really marked the 49 days of the shoot of Stillwater? I, I know that there was a few days that they shot in the uh, Orange Velodrome. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, but of course, when you're talking about Marseille, you cannot... <laughs> like you have to talk about soccer and you have to talk about the Velodrome. It's known in Marseille, in France, of course, but in, as well in the world. And we, we've we shot and we were um, so happy to be able to as well collaborate with uh, some uh, supporters and, and fan clubs uh, from uh, the Marseille uh, uh, soccer team. Um, and, and that are really known uh, everywhere if you are interested in soccer, of course, and uh, we, there's a big scene in the film that takes place uh, in the Velodrome, and it was uh, really uh, a, a nice experience. We, they welcomed us, and uh, we were able to work with a very uh, enthusiastic and supportive and really helpful uh, fans. Uh, so that was, uh, that was a great experience that I think we all uh, keep that in our memories as being uh, one of the hits of that film. Um, but yeah. 
No, and, and you mentioned that McCarthy, as a director, wanted to um, to use a lot of found locations. He was inspired by French films from the 1960s and uh, shooting on the fly. But for for other filmmakers and other projects with with different sets of needs, um, there there is a good amount of studio space available just outside of Marseille. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, Provence Studios? Well, uh, maybe uh, David and Vanessa could talk about it as well. Like, uh, well, I, I know as well Provence Studio. We didn't have the chance to work with them on this film because as you just mentioned it um tom as he wanted to shoot that as a french film and as we know french film from the nouvelle vague or like he wanted to be uh, on location all the time so even for some sets that we could have been built uh we didn't use that so otherwise uh, the Provence studio would have been the perfect uh, uh logistical support for us to to for stages and and others we had um well, we worked with them but just like on the very uh distant uh, relationship just for a few things where we at some point had to park some trucks there or do a few like logistical base but not really um, as a, a stages as we could have used them uh, for this film but of course uh, last year they've shot a huge series there uh, that uh, one of my colleague competitors John Bernard could talked about maybe in a different case study um, and David and uh, as I said, Vanessa I could talk about all the projects that has been shot there, but uh, yes, it, there's, you've got stages in Marseille uh, and uh, or in Martigues, and um, and uh, there's uh, like you can shoot for Marseille, and you you can also use uh, the support of log logistical base and stages if you wanted to as well. David, can you yeah, tell us a little bit about? Or Vanessa, pardon me, pardon me. Please. So, yes, we have the chance uh, to have uh, Provence Studios very close to Marseille and it's a real opportunity for productions because they can easily mix uh, outdoor sets and uh, shootings in the studio. Um, at the same time that Stillwater was under production, there were three other large-scale productions happening in Marseille. And so that's a good opportunity to talk about some of the production infrastructure. I mean, the crews that were obviously going to be divided between the different projects. Could you guys, it's an open question, tell us, what was what were some of the logistical issues with this film? What were some of the logistical challenges? And, and how many people, uh, local technicians, were hired overall, if you have, a, you know, a general well, number? The issues are are technically the same as we have uh, now everywhere uh, in, in France and in Europe. It's like there's so many productions that, of course, uh, you have a limited uh, access to specific technicians. Uh, but uh, that said, and you mentioned it, as we were shooting Steerwater, there was uh, two other uh, big productions in Marseille shooting at the same time, and we were able to have 70% uh, of our crew being uh, local and of course as for any other productions we brought some technicians from uh, Paris or Nice or other area in France but as well from the UK or the States because that was the part of the core crew that I was mentioning prior uh, technicians uh, like the production designer or the DP and uh, that are always working with Tom McCarthy so this is not a question of finding the technicians or not it's just that of course some directors want to work with their close um, HODs that they've used to work with you know, on other films, so that's normal. Um, but uh, there are a, a very good pool of technicians in Marseille, and uh, so that's why they have, I don't know how many productions, and uh, Vanessa will probably uh, be able to answer like how many productions they have per year, and the number of uh, different uh, series or films, French films, international productions as well. Um, uh, but yes, like uh, at the moment, there's so many f productions happening in, in Europe that, uh, of course, uh, sometimes you struggle because if you're not the first, then you have to find. Uh, but it's also a very good opportunity to, for uh, new technicians and uh, to be able to ramp up and, and have uh, other positions like it is in the UK or in, uh, in other cities uh, of the country. We talked but a lot about... Maybe. Oh, no, we Maybe about the year, um, with uh, about uh, 500 uh, shootings per year, uh, Marseille is the second uh, destination for filming after Paris in France. We've talked a lot about um, behind-the-camera help, technicians and the like. Uh, now, looking at 
in front of the camera help, uh, the film Stillwater employed 90 local actors and uh, nearly 1,900 extras. And so, Anne, could, could you describe just in general, tour, in general terms the pool of talent in the Marseille area? Well, it's, quite, it's a very broad and wide uh, a pool, basically. It depends on what you're looking for. And, uh, and as Tom had the real will to get real people also from everyday life and with a mixity of ages, sex and uh, ethnicity, Marseille is the perfect pool for that. And also uh, the problem we have a bit in Marseille is like um, we don't have many agencies. We have a one or two at the moment. And uh, and a lot of uh, the casting process relies on basically knowing people, knowing theaters, knowing companies, knowing all these kind of things, as uh, we don't really have a complete repertoire of, you know, all the actors who could be in Marseille because there aren't, there aren't many agents, basically. And all the people who are in agencies in Marseille are basically people who started uh, filming with all the casting directors in Marseille, and we recommended that to get an agent. That's how it works here, more or less. Also, we have uh, some actors who are doing very, very well living in Marseille and who have Paris agents because they, they don't only work in Marseille, they work in France and they even work abroad now. Uh, I have a few examples of uh, people who have been on a Netflix series in London lately and uh, so it's picking up, it's been slow, it's a long process, but it's really picking up. What we need basically at the moment are maybe acting schools. We've got Lerac, which is, uh, Lerac is, has the sec second and third year, or third year now in Marseille. Uh, the schools, the theater school starts in uh, Nice and Cannes, and they do one year, the, their final year in Marseille. So that's a very good pool, but, as it is a school, it's uh, people who are from 21 to 26 or 28, and the rest we really have to find. Uh, what is really good is that we have a very good uh, intelligence of casting directors in Marseille, and we do help each other. There's no, not a competition between all of us because luckily we all work right now, and we all work a hell lot. And, uh, you know, a phone call, you know, you know who and so, do you know who can do this, you know, who can do that? And also all the, well, street, not street casting, but, you know, going to theaters and trying to find people. Or also, as uh, we have, um, people are doing a lot of extras work, featured extras. We also try now in small parts and trying to grow with them or trying to make them grow also in the parts they're doing. And but in this, one, in the specific one of case the of talking, oh, sorry, Ben, talking about still water is, um, uh, uh, as you can imagine, when we started the production, we had uh, uh, as well a casting director in Paris, and uh, one of the good surprises for Tom and the production, and we were really happy and uh, to, about that, is that at the end all the daily players, not talking about Camille Cotin, of course, but all the all the daily players, like say 90% of them. Uh, were uh, coming from Marseille and uh, and the area, which was a very um, good surprise because we were not expecting that to begin with, and that's why we were also working with the Parisian casting director to make sure that we have all our cast. So at the end, there's a large pool, and depending on the productions that you're working on, um, and it was really good. This is a good opportunity to talk about maybe the most breakout performer of the film. Uh, and that's an actor uh, who was eight years old when she made it, and that's Lilou Siovo, who I believe uh, came to the project by way of her elementary school dance teacher. Uh, and she uh, she plays the young daughter of Camille Cotin, who, who you know creates a very strong emotional bond with Matt Damon, and uh, also impressed with Matt Damon's character, but also impressed Matt Damon so much as a performer that he compared her to Meryl Streep uh, at the Cannes Film Festival press conference. And so, could you tell us about how this kind of Cinderella story came about? Like, how did um how did a young girl from the area get compared to Meryl Streep at Cannes a couple of years later? Well, she's amazing, but I wish she gets the same career as Meryl Streep. <laughs> How did how did it start? How did how did how did she join the film? Uh, basically, she, you know, we, I put a kind of like um, 
uh, ad on uh, all the social media and stuff. And her dance teacher doesn't come from school because Lilou does dance at a very high level also. Uh, the dance teacher said, uh, okay, you, you know, you should send a photo and uh, ask them to do a little video of one minute introducing themselves. And uh, we thought she was interesting. And then she came to meet us for the a precast, kind of like precasting. And we tried a few things with her and uh, we thought she was just amazing. And, uh, and uh, we saw a lot of kids between Paris and Marseille. I think we saw about 280 little girls of that age between seven and nine and uh, then it got reduced day by day with uh, the first choices of Tom and uh, and uh, that's it and she was really amazing and she she's one in a thousand uh, what what else can I say you know you've got sometimes people like that you know they come into a room and suddenly the lights there is some light there is something I remember, you know, when I did the, the first casting for Hafsia Erzi for uh, La Graine et le Mulet, it was the same. There was no part for her. There was nothing. When I saw her, I called Abdelatif Keshis and I said, you have to watch her. There's something, I don't know what, I don't know how to describe it, but there's something special about some people. And Lilou has that quality. There's something yeah. special about that kid. She's one of them. And uh, uh, as I was mentioning prior, we were casting uh, everywhere in France and uh, as well uh, in other countries. And uh, she just uh, stood up. So it, it was great. Uh, it was great for the movie that she was uh, from the city. Uh, but that's not the reason why we picked her. It's because she, she was just great. And uh, for everyone, it's a very nice uh, adventure that we all had. Uh, um, I hope that she shared that experience. I'm sure she shares this experience with us, and and we are st still lucky to have had shared this experience with her. It was great. And she, that, that she, 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 she's just a, an adult in the in the body of a child. Yeah. That's very strange. Very mature. No, very. very she's a natural born actor, and and she really does carry a lot of the film. Um, because of the way the role was written, uh, she's, she does say most of her dialogue in French, and she's written as a child who has a hard time connecting with uh, the American played by Matt Damon. But overall, what does the pool of multilingual talent look like in, in Marseille and in the region? Well, it's still a bit um, difficult for the moment, you know, when we when it depends on the size of the part. But... Uh, uh, Marseille people are not well known for being the best English speakers. <laughs> it's it's starting, but it's it's starting thanks to also all the productions who are coming right now, like all the Netflix and uh, and things, and people start to see how important it is to to, to speak English. Uh, I've also worked with some actors last year when we did some uh, acting in English uh, training, and there is still a lot of work to do here in Marseille, uh, for example, for this, even for some small parts in the still water, when you look for, um, uh, you remember the um, university professor, Akenawedo, who was supposed to be fluent in English with a perfect British accent, uh, uh, African origin uh, in his 50s, uh, in Marseille it's very difficult, so we still have to work with Paris, these kind of things, and I just hope the have that, you know, uh, training that they can get in English would get a bit wider because it's more and more difficult for actors also to get uh, this kind of like uh, free training in English. At the same um, Cannes, Pro uh, Cannes Film Festival press conference this past July where Matt Damon famously compared uh, his co-star to Meryl Streep, he also rather infamously said uh, that if he were a young man, he would move to Marseille. Uh, and I just wonder, what do you think he meant by that? Um, like, in terms of the uh, ancillary and auxiliary benefits for productions coming to Marseille, uh, quality of life or reception, local reception, uh, what did Matt Damon mean by saying that he would like to move to Marseille, maybe in another life, maybe in his future, who knows? But it's... Uh... Well, it's difficult to talk for someone, but uh, as uh, David was mentioning that prior, Marseille is, is a multicultural city. Uh, it's really dynamic at the moment, and there's so many things that you can find, so many things that you can have. You can have a city life, but also uh, 
uh, this the uh, the Parc Naturel de Calanque and many other places just close to Marseille where you can have so many different landscapes, so many different style of life. Of course, you're in the south of France, so what can you ask for more? Um, and this, um, uh, I, I can understand like for, for it's, there's so many things that you can experience and the quality of life is great uh, that, uh, you know, people would say that uh, the Mediterranean food is good for your health as well. So <laughs> you have actually tomatoes that taste like tomatoes. You have uh, fruits that taste like fruits where you have natural sugar in it, you know, like not just. So I, 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 we, I think we can go on and on uh, to, to, to tell you what you can have in that city or in the south of France in general as well. It's just that but, but Marseille in particular is really a mix that also uh, is something that you like when you are in uh, in other cities as well in the US uh, where you have uh, different cultures and 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 the good things are about it is uh, so it's really good for everyone and well, I would let uh, the people from Marseille I'm actually not living in Marseille I was happy when I'm going there I have part of my family there but um, uh, to to talk about their city but yeah it, I, I can understand why someone could say so so and honestly right now if you're 20 years old in Marseille it's a kicking city the nightlife is crazy out of Covid you've got many festivals everywhere like cultural music during the last 10 years, it, it became crazy. I moved to Marseille 20 years ago. It wasn't like that. It was more a village. Now it's like an international city. Yes, we, we are living a very special moment and Marseille benefits from a very trendy image. So many, many people coming from creative fields decide to move in Marseille. So um, it's a very special moment. and. It's great. I, I think this is something that people also used to say when, for instance, say if you were young to go to live in Berlin, and I think Marseille could be similar in that sense as well. Like it's, uh, you can have an apartment or a house and it's not that expensive and it compares to other places in France or in Europe. Uh, so life is, is not that expensive. Uh, I, I will not say cheap, but still uh, really uh, more than affordable. And uh, and and there's a very real, real uh, multicultural aspect of it, and very dynamic. So I think it's great. Beyond just quality of life, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that the city has kind of promoted the quality of landscape um, as part of its international outreach campaign. Uh, when, when when like. Marseille Film Commission goes to international film markets. The, the slogan that they use on most of their marketing material, or at least it was a couple of years ago, was Marseille Terre du Cinéma, uh, Marseille Land of Cinema, with a very evocative picture of the Mediterranean. And so, um, as a production facility, how much and how important is the, 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 you know, the, the natural decor, how important is the, the, the expressive um, landscapes part of the offer that Marseille presents? Mm. Can you repeat, please? <laughs> Sorry, well, the, because it no, was the, before. The slogan, Mar Marseille's slogan is often um, Marseille Terre du Cinéma, Marseille Land of Cinema. And that seems to me that it's also emphasizing just not only the production capacities, but also the natural landscapes that the city offers. Is that, is that, would that be a correct assessment? Yeah, I, I think productions... And filmmakers uh, like the natural landscapes of Marseille, but also you have so many different sets in Marseille. You are, if you are in the city center, it's totally different from uh, if you are in the north part of the city. Uh, in some old districts, you can feel like in a village. Uh, so um, there are so many moods that you can find natural, urban, and so on. Parks. Um. Stillwater shot in 2019, which is still a little while ago. Uh, what has happened to Marseille since then? I, I know that in 2020, the um, Court Rajmé School opened up their doors. Can you tell us a little bit about that project? Yeah, yeah, we noticed that we are more and more schools set in Marseille. We have more and more companies based in Marseille because Marseille is a place for shooting, but it's also a hub for productions, a hub for writers, directors, uh, as, we say, as we said. And uh, there are also many companies specialized in uh, post-production and in animation. So there is like a, a boom in this sector. Uh, um, 
for for three three or four projects. Um, just the last question: What are some of the upcoming projects, uh, both production projects and and also maybe civic investment projects uh, in the pipeline for Marseille, for Marseille, and that have maybe already been shot in Marseille? What are what's the next Stillwater going to be? Well, I think David should answer. But he's in a car at the moment. But like uh, the next uh, Stillwater might be a, a series. Uh, uh, developed by very talented people. I'm not working on it, so I think David should, uh, should talk about it, but I know about this project and it's very, it's a great project for Netflix and it's a mini series that uh, is going to talk about Marseille in a way that you did not see it as well or uh, about the, the big uh, history with the big age and uh, things that uh, um, were not being really told or not known. It's a very interesting story, so maybe David could talk about it. And uh, on my side, I've just done done a scout for another big um, U.S. productions that might come to shoot in the south of France and partly in Marseille. Um, but uh, uh, I cannot really talk about it, but it's uh, a film uh, it would be the equivalent of a kind of a small uh, James Bond, if we can say. Uh, so I hope it's going to happen, but we'll see. But please, David, talk about your project and Anne is working on it, on it as well, as well as uh, Vanessa, of course. Vanessa. Yeah. You know, David. know, maybe David is in the secret. Uh, <laughs> As a film commission, we are very discreet about the projects. <laughs> no, we are not in the, pro in, the, in, the, in the in the in the secret. We talked about a TV series for Netflix, seven episodes, a TV drama about a community of resistance who really came in Marseille in the forties. Uh, Variant Fine was an American journalist sent to Marseille to save 200 important people. He did bad because he saved more than 2,000 people at the end and he was sent back to, to America because he was a bad boy. So we are really proud to, to talk about this story, about this story people who saved people's lives. And I have to say that this is the only Variant Varian Fry who saved life. The others, they are not good, but this one is really good for us. <laughs> we are really proud to, to have it in Marseille. It's a real series. It's really always actual. So it's based, it's filmed uh, in this movie like we did for Stewata. We wanted the real, the real, the real location. So we didn't go to the, we planned to go to the, to the studios at the beginning. But because of the riches of the city, we find the location that we need and the atmosphere that we need making it with the real locations in the real city where things happened at the time. And I let Anne to, to follow. And, and, and last year, I think, uh, Vanessa, you can mention it as well. There was, uh, because you were, we were talking about stages, there was uh, a, a, as well a, a big series that has been shot uh, in Marseille. Uh, once again, I didn't work on it, but I know that there was a, a very good, good project and big projects that was not meant to shoot in Marseille, but they used Marseille as a logistical base to shoot all the stages. So that's a good thing to, to say because it means that you can go to Marseille not only if you want to shoot the exterior or the locations, but also for the stages. This is, this is what we did last year because I worked um, with Anne with, on uh, the TV series called Catherine de Medicis. Catherine de Medicis was married in Marseille. It was more difficult to find the good locations because 600 years ago it was a bit different. <laughs> The city was a bit different, so we recreated a lot, a lot in the studios in the south, and we found few locations in the south, like the castles and the exteriors, like the beach and stuff like that. We used Marseille as our base of living and working also, but we did every day the the traveling from Marseille to the studios, and it was a pleasure to to work with the big area in the in the big area and not. In, uh, in one place. So we like to mix the studios and exteriors at the same time. So when it's possible to, to do it at the outside, we do it and we like it. And if it's not possible, we have this solution with the big studios in party who are better and better days after days. Well, thank you all so much. I think we have to leave it there. But moral of the story is come to Marseille for work, stay to play and know that they'll keep your secrets after you leave. Uh, thank you. Have a, have a wonderful day. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, everyone. Bye, Ben. Bye, everybody.